For more videos visit forthesakeofeducation.com Alright guys, now we're going to do this problem which says determine the magnitude of the resultant force of these three forces and measure it clockwise from the positive x-axis. Now, I want you to take a look at something. This one's 40, this one's 30, and this one's 91. But they're all almost the same length, so you always got to try and draw your problems as accurately as possible. That way, when you look at the answer, you can say, hey, you know what, it kind of makes sense, it kind of doesn't. I do that for all my problems, and I know it's tedious, but you always want to get the answer right. So, this problem, uh, let's start, let's call this one force 1, force 2, and force 3. So, the only thing I did is draw this one longer because this one's 91 pounds, this one's 40, this one's 30. You can have them all the same length. Now, when you draw it right, you're going to see that the resultant force is going to go more or less somewhere over there, I would say. I know the final answer, so I can kind of draw it, but I also could do a pretty good guesstimate when I drew it originally and this is good practice. So force 1 is equal to 40 pounds, let's just write 40 for now, times 3 over 5 in the positive i unit vector plus 40 times 4 over 5 in the j unit vector. And when you solve this, you're going to get that this is 24i plus 32j. Let's go to force 2. Not that complicated. It's just 30 going in the positive i unit vector direction. And force 3, well, let's label this one resultant force estimated. Actually, I would say that it's going to be much longer since all the forces are aiming the same direction. So it's going to be much longer. I would say somewhere over there. Let's see. Force 3 is going to be 91 times 5 over 13 in the i direction minus, because we're going on the negative y direction, 91 times 12 over 13 in the negative j direction. When you solve this, you're going to get that this is 35i minus 84j. Now let's calculate the resultant force by adding all the x components and the y components with the y components. So when you add them up, you're going to get that the resultant force is 89i, pretty high in the x direction because all the forces are aiming towards a positive x direction, and negative 52j because this force takes away from this one, but it doesn't completely kill it because this is 91 pounds and this is just 40 pounds, so it still draws it down, like we said. So as you can see, this is pretty long on this end, all the way to 89. And this is going to go down all the way to 52. So our guesstimate was more or less correct, so that answer kind of makes sense. Now we need to find this angle theta and this magnitude. I'd like to start with the magnitude. You can calculate the magnitude by doing the square root of these two numbers added together. So 89 squared plus 52 squared. All square rooted will give you the magnitude. And that will be 103.1 pounds. When you're going to put the final answer, make sure you put the unit. And the angle theta can be easily calculated by doing the tangent inverse of the y over the x theta will give you 30.3 degrees they want to measure clockwise from the positive x-axis so they do want this angle this is 
more or less makes sense and the magnitude is 103.1 which also more or less makes sense look at the graph final answer